Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about holism and holistic, a holistic view of the world. Um, and okay, so one interesting thing he talks about is he says, um, you lose 50 to 150 strands of hair a day. You shed 10 million flakes of skin a day. Every 28 days, you get completely new skin. And every nine years, your entire body is renewed. He says, and yet your body, in the midst of this relentless shedding and dying and changing and renewing, continues to remember to be you. <laughs> strand by strand, flake by flake, atom by atom. Um, and he just gives some different examples, you know, that we've heard of, of like, if you juice the apple and then you take the fiber, you take the, what's left and you take the juice, or, you know, just this idea of like, you can have the different components of something, but there is something in the whole, like the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, right? He's just talking about that. Um, and I love it. <laughs> he says, all of it raising the question, where are you in your body? Um, this is because there are dimensions to you that transcend the actual parts and pieces that you refer to as your body. Qualities and characteristics that emerge only at a larger collective level when all those parts are assembled to form you. Holism is the reality that emerges only when all the parts are put together but can't be individually located, labeled, or identified at a smaller component parts level. Um, oh, and he says, holism is your awareness that you cannot hold soul in your hand. Um, holism, is, holism is the truth that your consciousness and personality and awareness cannot be located in your physicality in the same way that your identity and thoughts and fears and favorite ice cream and opinions about this and that um, can't be detected in your elbow or your nose or your pancreas. And I've heard like other people kind of talk about that, but I love hearing a Christian pastor talk about this um, because I like if you've you know if you haven't watched my story, go watch it. Um, there might be several videos of it, but there should be one that's kind of like the summary. But coming from a Christian background, then, you know, for me, like learning about evolution, having this moment where it all, all, everything I learned through my like experience of just being a mom and doing life, um, it dawned on me that evolution was true. And that was the catalyst for this like crisis of faith for me. And then this rebuilding of my faith and, you know, embracing some, you know, incredible different pieces of truth that I needed that seemed to come from more of like a myst mystical <laughs> source than from Christianity. But I grew up, I followed Christianity all the way through, learned everything, and I was still missing stuff. So I've been on this, this search that, you know, I'm honestly still on. Um, and I am just loving seeing how he you know, interacts with these different concepts that I think are difficult and challenging for Christians. Um, so I love seeing how he does that because I need to figure out in talking to you and guiding you and guiding myself and guiding us through this process, um, what that looks like. Give me two minutes. Um, so he says, consciousness didn't come until later in creation with the arrival of humans and probably not even in humans until relatively recent in history. Which, like, that's something that we just know at some point in our evolution, like, that happened, and I don't fully understand that, but the more I learn about evolution and science, and I see, and I, the more I let go of the fear of evolution being this, some, like, this thing, like, it can't, evolution can't, can't shake my faith anymore, because it already did, and I already rebuilt it, and I'm already trying to figure out, but God is real, Jesus was the man, um, the ancient civilizations all had like many gods and then you see how god revealed himself to them you don't need to sacrifice you don't need to do this i'm actually one god i'm actually in everything i'm actually for you i'm not against you like as you know as humans evolved and learned to like fear weather and associate it with gods god revealed himself to to people and somewhere in that um a bunch of different things happen i don't understand all of it yet but I know that it's beautiful and I know that God was in it and for us. So it's interesting to hear him talk about that. Um, you are aware that you are you, which is a phenomenon that didn't simply didn't exist here for billions of years. Um, okay, so he says, why talk about hierarchy and holism? 
because people have a hard time believing there's a God because we can't see God and we don't have hard evidence for the existence of God and we don't have any proof we can study or analyze or evaluate in any scientific, tangible way. But he says the twist on all of this is that we all agree that you exist. And he says you have elbows and a pancreas and all these different parts of you that can be measured, but your soul, he says, we can't capture that much less measure or study it, but we all agree there's more to you than your physical body. Um, and so he says, a bit like God, because when I'm talking about God, I'm talking about a reality known, felt, and experienced, but one that cannot be located in any specific physical place in any tangible way. He says, when we talk about God, we're talking about something very real, and yet beyond our conventional means of analysis and description, beyond our capacity for language to understand. He says the Germans have a word for this, which they call Grinsbegrifflich, I don't know, which um, describes that which is very real, but is beyond analysis and description. And he says, when I'm talking about God, I'm talking about your intuitive sense that reality at its deepest flows from the God who is Grinsbegriff, which means very real, but beyond analysis and description. Um, Yeah, 